Well, hello there. I'm in Arakar, and today uh, I'm going to walk up uh, Bianim. I hope that's how you pronounce it, uh, which is the highest mountain in the Arakar Alps. It's up there somewhere. Um, it's a mountain that I've walked up probably two or three times in the past. Um, I'm getting on in years, I just I thought it'd be nice to walk up this mountain another time. Might be the last time. You never know. Um, in the past, uh, in this area, uh, uh, once in Glen Crow and once uh, heading up towards the top of uh, BNM, um, I've had a few um, what you might term sheep experiences. Uh, one good and one bad, and at some point during today's walk, I'll, I'll tell you about them. And um, you know, that's something to look forward to. I think we'll all like a good sheep experience. So, I'm all prepared for the walk. Uh, I've got uh, ropes, uh, a rope ladder, and a parachute. Best to uh, be prepared for any eventuality. It's adventure time. Boston's worse, to be honest. Because <laughs> New York, traffic is moving on the train, so it's a Well, I've come out of the, that woodland there in a zigzag path and we're thankfully now on the open hill and we can see lots of stuff going on. For those people on this track, and there's quite a lot of them who are making their way towards uh, Ben Arthur or the Cobbler, they've at least got a very recognisable mountain <laughs> to make for. You know, you, do, you can't mistake that for anything else. But uh, all the others kind of look much of a sameness. Um, but I thought this was maybe a good uh, spot to, to stop and uh, tell the first sheep story. And it actually took place many years ago when I was in the lower slopes of B&M, further up, way past uh, the cobbler and what have you. Um, and there was a sheep on the ground on its back and its, its legs were doing all sorts of strange wriggling stuff. Um, this was a sheep that had fallen over and couldn't get back up again. Um, and when you think about it, that's a pretty major design flaw. If you fall over, you can't go up again and you're doomed. 
Um, that said, the sheet was trying to right itself by trying to get up against the slope. It was on a slight slope. Uh, that made it more difficult for it to right itself. Um, that said, it was the best um, option that was open to it because if it had tried to right itself with the slope, it may have got to the stage where it didn't just right itself, it would have started rolling and rolling and rolling all the way down to the bottom of the hill and might not have survived that. So this sheep was pretty well stuck. So I, I just approached it from behind and muttered a few reassuring words and uh, gently gave it a hand on its feet. Whereupon it had a pee and wandered off. Not as much as a thank, a thank you or a thanks. <laughs> but um, we'll continue on this track. This is a track that a lot of folk use, whether they're going up uh, the, the Cobbler or Ben or Nain or b and And as we, as we continue on this track, we'll see how many filter off onto the side mountains and uh, uh, how many are going the same way that I'm going. Well, this is the Narnian boulders. It's a very busy track, this, and it's quite difficult having a, a decent chat about sheep experiences without folk looking at you and going, uh oh. But as far as the Narnian boulders is concerned, there's any number of photographs showing guys in the past that are sat and sheltered by the, this huge boulder here. And probably early 20th to mid 20th century, you got a lot of guys actually cycling from Glasgow, and this was a huge day out. They'd be all dressed up in their outdoor gear of the day. Whatever that might have been, jumpers and stuff like that. But um, just beyond here, we'll be between the, the mountains of... Uh, Ben Arthur and Ben Narnane and then uh, hopefully we'll get a bit of um, more solitude than we're perhaps getting now. I don't think I've ever seen a busier path than this. Uh, but uh, we'll carry on and we'll see how we go.
as far as rocks are concerned, on a scale of 1 to 10, this is one's probably a 7. That's fairly comfortable. Well, just a little bit past and between the, the two mountains of uh, Ben Arthur and Ben Nernain, uh, and just uh, that's BNM just there. I can see a well defined path going up it. I'm just going to stop here for lunch. As I may have said in the previous video, it, when you come out this way, if you're coming from Glasgow or really probably anywhere, you know, I came from Glasgow to Arragher and the bus will get the same bus back. Uh, you really have to book, you don't, well you don't have to book the bus, but it's, it's prudent and sensible to book the bus in advance, i.e. the day before and not five minutes before it's due. As was the case for somebody that got on the bus. And of course the driver didn't have that person person's booking on his, his uh, photocopied list. And he could just as easily have given what he thought was a spare seat to someone else. You know, if you're going to book, and it is advisable to book, then do so the day before so that you're given the company plenty of notice. But it wouldn't be the first time I've been out this way and uh, you're waiting on the bus... You see the bus approaching and it just goes by because it's full. You know, and you, if you didn't have money for accommodation, you could be in some difficulties, you know. So a bit of sense required. Oh. When I was on the bus there, I find myself developing a wee bit of a cough on the bus, a really tickly throat and a cough, and I sneezed a couple of times. I was okay before I got on the bus, I think it was something to do with the inside of the bus that was doing this. But there was a guy got on the bus, an old guy, old bitter guy by the looks of him. He just wanted to make everybody else's life a misery because his hadn't quite worked out the way he planned. So, you know, he got on the bus and he sat in a seat right in front of me. You know, the normal decadence or the, the, the normal way to do this would be to sit in the, the seat beside the seat. You know, not, not right in front of me. I'm looking at, at I thought I was getting a pretty decent view. All of a sudden, I'm getting a view of the back of this guy's head. I think he did it deliberately out of badness. He wanted a good view and he wanted also to spoil my view. But of course, uh, the reason that I didn't sit on the seat that he sat on because there was a big chocolate stain in it, and I don't think he noticed. So I hope, I hope when he gets off the bus, he, his back of his trousers had a big chocolate stain on it. I'll, I'll teach him. It was also one of these guys, as I say, I, I developed a bit of a cough on the bus, and it, almost every time I coughed, he turned round and gave me a glower. You know, one of these guys, you know, you're, you're a hair split away from saying, I'm just coughing, mate, just calm down. <laughs> you know, and he was wearing a, a mask, you know, some people are still wearing a mask after the COVID pandemic. I mean, during the COVID pandemic, when you were allowed to travel and you're on a bus, if somebody coughed, everybody in the bus would turn around and look at them. But this guy, just a bitter old codger. It, try to suppress a cough, it's not easy, you know, I thought, I'm going to cough again. This guy's going to glower at me. <laughs> the joys of public transport. I know this, I got this role in Arica, I know it's going to be seriously disappointing. I got a, a glimpse of the disappointment just as I, I sort of packed that way and I thought, oh, oh. I mean, it's, as soon as she handed it over and I felt how light it was, I thought, oh, we're in trouble here. I've 
paid two quid for a load of crap. So brace yourself. You're at least in Glasgow we do decent rolls. That's just there's no weight in that, it's all soft, fluffy stuff. So it's not a decent roll for a start, you know. If I open up what have we got? We've got the cheese and onion as I ordered. Uh, the problem is that the cheese, rather than a, being a decent sized chunk of cheese, is a monomolecular layer that you could almost see through. Too quick for that, you know. I'll rip off. I should have made my own sandwiches. But sometimes you like to kind of get a sandwich somewhere else because there are places that do good sandwiches. The place I got this from, unfortunately, isn't one of them. And that's not a, an incentive or an inducement for me to return to that place. I'll not go back there. But of course, perhaps it was a place that was struggling because of the pandemic. In fact, most of the places that I thought I could get something to eat in Arica were shut. And I suspect there's been a lot of casualties there as far as the COVID pandemic is concerned. So in many ways, perhaps this was just another business that's struggling and just doing its best to survive and cutting back on the amount of cheese on the rolls. So I maybe shouldn't moan, you know. Um, as far as the other sheep experience is concerned, <laughs> this was the bad sheep experience. And I was walking through Glen Crow many years ago, and there was a sheep just off the the, the military road that I was walking along, and it was its front legs were completely right in, stuck in the oh, I lost a bit of my cheese, um, in mud. And this sheep, it must have been there for a while, it c clearly couldn't get itself out. You know, it brought its feet, sunk it in it, it was not able to get itself out. And it was almost dead. I mean, no doubt this sheep wouldn't have survived. It was almost dead, but it was still alive. And, um, and I tried giving it a wee bit of water. Well, I tried pulling it out. But it was actually, a sheep's quite a heavy thing, and I just, for, for whatever reason, I just couldn't manage it. I tried giving it some water and stuff, but it, it was barely able to acknowledge the fact that I was there. As I say, I'd almost pegged it. I, I wasn't, didn't know what to do, you know. I could, I could just leave it. Um, so I couldn't get a signal on my phone. So I, went, I, went back, I backtracked along the military road, there was a house just off the road, I went in there, chapped the door. Um, I, I can't remember what I would have, I, I presume I would have said, have you got a phone, I could have used her phone or something, or I think I, I think I asked her if she knew who the farmer was so that I could let him know, but I, I couldn't get a signal on my phone anyway. But she gave me a phone number of the farmer, um, I don't know why they didn't phone <laughs> Anyway, um, so I, I went back to the rest and be thankful. There was some kind of fast food van there, and I said to the guy, and he thankfully could get a signal on his phone, and he let me use his phone. I spoke to the farmer and let him know, um, you know. That's all, I, that's all I could think of to do, but I mean, no doubt that sheep would just have died. It, it, it was just... Something I'll never forget, actually, a very sad thing, you know. When you can't really help an animal. Yeah. Well, we'll finish this rather pitiful cheese roll and um, we'll head up in the final stretch to the top of B&M. See you shortly.
great. Well, on the rock scale of 1 to 10, the one I'm sitting on is a, a, a 1. It's not a good rock to sit on. This is the top of b &M. We've made it. The views are out of this world. I, I don't think there's any way I can properly capture them in the camera. I'll try my best, mind you, but... Um, it's, it's pretty breathtaking, you know. But in addition to showing you what I have uh, attempted to capture, I think what I'll do is I'll leave you in the capable hands of Google Earth. Uh, I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now.